From now on, you are Guy Fieri, and you are using your famous donkey sauce to start a hot new restaurant in New York City. However, your arch nemesis, Gordon Ramsay, has opened up a restaurant across the street. Please narrate the beginning of, of an, an original, original story. story about how you and Gordon had to use donkey sauce to overcome the trials of the opening day of a restaurant. The sun beat down on New York City's bustling oh, sidewalks, shit. melting the pavement under the feet of countless rushed pedestrians. Guy Fieri stood outside his latest venture, the Flavatown Bistro, his trusty sous chef by his side. Flavatown? All right, Oak Chef, we're ready to start slinging some donkey sauce and rocking this joint, Guy exclaimed, fist pumping the air. But just as Guy and his team began welcoming their first batch of patrons, their eyes caught sight of Gordon Ramsay's new restaurant, aptly named The Red Kitchen. Oh, come on! That's just not okay, chef. Guy shook his head as he watched Ramsay and his Gee. brigade prepping and plating their dishes efficiently as the first wave of customers rushed through the doors. All seemed to be going smoothly until Guy's deep fryer malfunctioned and started blowing out smoke that covered oh, no. the entire dining room like a thick fog. Pit oi, Guy yelled, his colorful jester shirt and spiky bleach blonde hair veiled by the smoke. We can't be shut down before we even get started. Over at the Red Kitchen, however, a strange incident unfolded. Ramsey's line cook started getting riled up over a smooth talking imposter calling shots in the kitchen. None other than Christopher Walken himself. <laughs> Wait, what in the world? Ramsey grumbled in frustration as the kitchen turned into a confusing yelling match of chefs versus imposters. But in the midst of the chaos, a daring Kyle McLaughlin took center stage, masking all the broken equipment in the kitchen with his superb sleight of hand. In the end, it was Guy's inspired use of donkey sauce, drizzling it over his flustered patrons and offering the Red Kitchen a generous bottle's worth as a peace offering that saved Flavatown Bistro and made him rise above the challenge. Guy and Gordon grinned, raising their thumbs like cowboys at a rodeo as the friendly cameras swirled all around them. Now that is some wicked donkey sauce, brother, Gordon <laughs> praised. <laughs> Continuing the story, suddenly, a talking killer whale named Gary burst through the wall in an attempt to rescue Gordon from the donkey sauce. There was a giant splash, and suddenly a massive orca whale named Gary burst in from the wall, landing on the cooking set. Panic-stricken, Guy and Gordon scrambled back, unsure of what to do next. Gary spoke in an impeccable British accent and explained that he was an award-winning chef from the Underwater Food Network. He had heard of their cooking competition <laughs> from under the sea and decided to pay the chefs a visit. Guy and Gordon were astonished. Gary was led to the kitchens and incensed at the profuse smell of donkey sauce that overwhelmed him upon opening the doors. <laughs> What's cooking in there? Gary asked incredulously. The chefs apprehensively replied. Despite turning their heads at the smell of the putrid sauce, Gary decided to ladle a bit to try and make a fair judgment. Unfortunately, he miscalculated his jump aboard the counter and ended up knocking down Gordon into a giant vat and inserting most of his tail into the spicy donkey sauce. <laughs> As they say, Never mess with the guy who makes yum yum. <laughs> donkey sauce is Guy Fieri's signature sauce for people who don't know. That isn't like a joke. His thing is donkey sauce. If you go to one of his restaurants, it's like, you'll get these nachos with jalapenos, black beans, and slathered with a heaping serving of our donkey sauce. Let's wrap up the story. Uh, please finish the story with Gor Guy Fieri and Gordon Ramsay falling in love and growing old running a donkey sauce restaurant together. But please change Guy Fieri and Gordon to now talk as extremely dumb cavemen and include a long series of vowels in between every sentence. Let's end this with true love. Guy Fieri and Gordon Ramsay, after a lifetime in the culinary business, decided to join forces and set up permanently at Flavatown's new restaurant, L'Amour Sauvage, a village-inspired eatery where Ooh. dishes were infused with natural and fresh Ooh. ingredients, allowing a plethora of flavors to bomb it around in their bars. Customers what? queued up to experience new creations filled with bursts of chocolate nuggets and wild atai berries, all smothered, of course, in their most noteworthy discovery, donkey sauce. Now, many moons later, they embellish themselves right back, feeling at home amongst the chopping boards, inspiring the young'uns and reflecting fondly on the adventures of their earlier rivalries. They chuckle as they serve, not concerned about a fiery debate over flavors, nor one up each other by showcasing their protege skills. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
said Guy to Gordon proudly. <laughs> Me so happy a donkey sauce make it a millions now. Gorgon, replied Gordon, grinning like an almost tooth-deprived ogre. Me been yang cannoli a la home. Yeah. They gave me the... He took the moment to gesture stiltedly. Dooley eyes like me, grandma's grew tiwis. Both are successful under one roof. They run their incredible bistro, tended by their vast family, a rollicking, unwashed staff, content in the friends they become from once bitter rivals. And as each day ends, customers stand to leave, gratefully handed a memento of fact and best flavor of donkey sauce chalor have ever thrown down their gullets. These two foodies turned lobotomy sufferers live happily ever after, truly never referring to each other for nothing than <laughs> delicious approaches suffer. digestible to foodies hope everywhere. <gasps> We did it, Gordon. <laughs> Me heart burst in. Guy chirped as they whisked their first batch of knob stand in their coveted Italian olive groves to bask and grill under a summer twilight. Ruffigat. Two. Parmigina. L'amour sauvage. Unknowing to its pride right emphasis on on wild and heightened extravagance <laughs> walked it with echoes of happy moments threatening even surpass their next adventure it was beautiful oh what a great story what a story mark Dude, the part where he said, and that's why they built a team of unwashed servers. Like, why were, why were they post lobotomy? Why were the, all their employees unwashed? Why did they call that out? I love that it was like two or three paragraphs of like coherent, good storytelling, and then the two of them started talking to each other in the caveman voice and just going <laughs> at each other. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Rivals turned lobotomy survivors. How do you how do you write that? It's unbelievable.